Welcome to the members and friends of Streetsville United Church and to all who have joined us for this online time of worship today. We're glad that you're with us. And we're glad that we can bring you God's word of comfort and hope in this way. And we're glad to be recording again from our sanctuary here. I'm John Tapscott, the minister of the church, and John Schillingberg is our pianist today. May God bless us during our time of worship and wherever we are today. I would like to read scripture today from John chapter 14 and selected verses. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. Those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would invite you now to join in singing with our Boomer Band as they lead us in a worship chorus. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord.
My message today is entitled, Peace for the Troubled Heart. Less than 24 hours before his crucifixion, Jesus said to his disciples, John 14, verse 27, Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Jesus had told his disciples clearly that he was leaving them, that one of them would betray him, and that even dear Peter would, be, would, would deny him three times. The disciples' minds were racing. There was a nod in their stomachs. Jesus was going to die. This was all happening too fast. Of course their hearts were troubled and afraid. But Jesus gave them a command. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. Now, Jesus never gave his disciples a command without supplying the means and the resources to do it. So Jesus also prefaced his command with a gift. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Jesus gave his disciples his peace so that they did not have to let their hearts be troubled or afraid. Have you ever had a troubled heart? And I don't mean physical heart troubles, which can be serious and even fatal. Thankfully, medical advances in heart disease treatment have given people a new lease on life. They've greatly improved over the past number of decades. But I'm speaking here of hearts that feel troubled and afraid. We've all experienced them from time to time. How could we not in these days? Anyone who has not felt troubled or afraid must be on another planet or living where there is no cell phone or internet or television service. This COVID-19 pandemic is a burdensome reality on every level, socially, medically, emotionally, financially, physically, spiritually. Every aspect of life has been affected. We've all had troubled and fearful hearts at various times, but this time the feeling is so persistent. But Jesus' word comes to us. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Jesus gives us his peace so that we do not have to let our hearts be troubled or afraid. Now sometimes Jesus' peace comes to us unexpectedly, out of the blue. Circumstances dictate that our hearts should be in turmoil, but instead we are at peace, inexplicably. It's something we can't predict or control. But receiving Jesus' peace is not totally beyond our control. Jesus' peace comes to us as we engage in certain activities and believe certain truths. First, Jesus' peace comes to us as we believe in God as he really is. Jesus said in 14 verse 1, Believe in God, believe also in me. And those words, believe also in me, are vitally important. Christians believe in God. We believe in God the Father and God the Son. Christians believe in God as Jesus has revealed him to us. We believe in God as he really is. We believe in God the Father. I am the way and the truth and the life, said Jesus. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now we usually take that as a salvation verse. And it is, for by his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus opened the way for all people to come to the Father in this life and in eternity. Jesus, the risen one, is the way to God. He gives the life of God to us. But this verse is also about revelation. For Jesus is the truth, the revealed truth about God. You can search through all the world's religions and only in Jesus' teaching do we find repeated reference to God as Abba, Father. 
Now, the Jewish people had a hint of this, of course, but this was a startling revelation of God to the pagan people and the Gentiles of the time, whose gods were often unpredictable, who, who often needed to be appeased, who often seemed angry. But throughout his ministry, Jesus proclaimed and revealed the fatherhood of God. Jesus said to Philip, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. We come to the Father only through the Son who reveals the Father to us. Now some people find it hard to relate to this image of God because of a bad experience of their earthly fathers. But we don't start with our earthly fathers and then project that image onto God. We start with God and take our image of fatherhood from him. God represents fatherhood as it should be. He is the perfect father. He is our heavenly father, the creator who knows and loves and cares and provides for his people. How does believing in God as he really is help bring Jesus' peace to our troubled hearts? Well, the image many people have of God is, is of an austere, distant deity waiting to punish our wrongdoing. This image of God is not very much different than the image that some of the ancient pagan people had. But knowing God as Father takes away our fear of him. God is our Father who desires it all belong to his family now and in eternity. And he is overjoyed when a person accepts his offer of salvation in Christ and says, Yes, I know that I am God's beloved child forever. Now, God takes our sin seriously. Human sin and disobedience wound his holy character. And there will be a final judgment on sin and evil. But rather than punishing us for our sins, God takes the penalty upon himself in his only son. That's why Jesus was going to the cross to die in our place, for our sins. That's how much the Father God loves us. This COVID-19 pandemic is not God's punishment upon a rebellious human race. Now, certainly I think God is teaching us lessons through this time, and we need to think about what those lessons are, and we will perhaps talk about them more in the future, but we shouldn't take this pandemic as God's punishment upon us. No, it comes from another source. God is with us in it, fighting against this powerful evil on our behalf. The God Jesus reveals is a God of suffering, searching love, a God who is for us in all that he does. He is the God of Jesus' famous parable, the father who runs to meet his returning prodigal with joy and tears and an open door. The daughter of Karl Marx was brought up without any religion. She said she didn't believe in God. But one day she read a prayer in an old German book and said, if the God of that prayer exists, I think I could believe in him. Asked what the prayer was, she replied, Our Father, who art in heaven. Well, that is God as he really is. Jesus reveals that God to us and leads us to him so that by faith we become his children forever. Jesus' gift of peace comes to us as we know and believe in God as he really is. Secondly, Jesus gift of peace comes to us as we do God's will. Have you ever awakened in the night at 2 a.m. worried and troubled about something? Of course, at 2 a.m. you can't do anything about it. But in the daylight, in the morning, when you can do something about it, you feel much more at peace. I think of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, so troubled as he prayed but then strengthened by God's angel. He said to God, not my will, but thy will be done. And at that moment, a divine peace came upon him and he rose up with strength. 
to go to Calvary. Jesus said, those who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. When we walk in God's way and do his will, a peace comes that the world can't give. Now, the world may well make life more difficult for those who walk in God's way. The world pushes back against those who represent God in the world. That's why the Jewish people have been so relentlessly persecuted throughout their history. It's not because they're perfect, they're not, and we're not either, but because their very existence as a people reminds the world of the God whose ways are higher than our ways, the God who alone, who alone can bring us life and health and peace. And yet the world desires to go its own way. Certainly the world gave Jesus little peace in his lifetime and his followers shouldn't expect worldly peace either. But Jesus' peace comes to us as we obey God and walk in his way. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Therefore, you do not have to let your hearts be troubled or afraid. One simple way we obey God is through worship, by giving God the glory due his name. I was clearing out my desk recently and found a note from someone who wrote to me some years ago. And the person said, thank you for the worship on Sunday, and then spoke of some things in her life that were making her troubled and afraid. But she had come to worship that Sunday and left here feeling at peace and strengthened for the situation. By simply doing what God asked her and all of us to do, she received the peace of Jesus. It's been true for so many of us as we obeyed God by worshiping, reading scripture, praying, walking in his way, and serving others. The peace of Christ has come to our troubled and fearful hearts. Thirdly, Jesus' peace comes to our hearts when we know that we are not alone. Jesus said to his disciples, I am going to be taken from you, but I will not leave you orphaned. The Father will give you another advocate to be with you forever. We are never, ever alone. We are never abandoned. We are never orphaned. We are never forsaken. Whatever would cause God to forsake us has been borne by Jesus in his death and defeated in his resurrection. Jesus said, I will never fail you or forsake you. The presence of God and the resources God gives us are with us always. Plus, we belong to the body of Christ, a loving, supportive, praying community of believers. In the church, we lean on one another when our hearts are troubled and afraid. We've been doing that over these, day, these troubling days. And when your heart is troubled, God is with you. Know that God is with you and that other Christians are there for you as well, just as close as a text message or an email or a phone call. The experts are telling us how important window visits are these days with residents in long-term care homes. Some of the residents probably don't grasp exactly what's happening and they don't grasp this unusual situation. But such visits by family members assure people, assure the residents that they are not abandoned, that they've not been forgotten or forsaken. And we all need that kind of assurance from when we are infants through to our last earthly breath. This assurance is given to us by God through Jesus Christ. The peace of Jesus comes to us when we know and believe that we are not alone. And finally, Jesus' peace comes to us as we look beyond this present world. Jesus said, in my father's house are many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you. Of course, we have earthly responsibilities and interests, but it's good for us to sometimes look forward and to look up. There's much more to come beyond this world. The Bible tells us that we have not seen nor heard nor even conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. And yet in Jesus, we have a foretaste of that time, that new age, whereas Revelation tells us 
God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the former things have passed away. Look up. And know that a place has been prepared for you in the Father's house and for all who love the Lord. As you do, the peace of Jesus comes to your troubled and fearful heart. Perhaps it's happening for you today as you hear Jesus' word. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Therefore, do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, our strength and our comforter, your gift is beyond our understanding and our achieving. Yet you graciously bless us with the peace that is so much greater than the peace the world gives. You dwell with us and within us by the Holy Spirit, reassuring us that we indeed belong to you as your beloved children forever. Through the finished work of him who loves us and gave himself for us, even Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. You, O Lord, are worthy of all our praise in this age and in the age to come. Speak your word to our hearts and minds this day and overcome the trouble and fear we often feel. In these days, we and the whole world need your blessing, O God. So may we turn to you in faith and receive the gracious gifts that even now you are pouring out for all people. Lord, continue to raise your loving arm of power against the COVID-19 pandemic and work mightily through all those who are seeking a cure and caring for sick and dying people. Bless the sad and the lonely, O Lord, those who are afraid or troubled. Let your word and your presence be for them a source of comfort and strength and encouragement. And though we are all limited, O God, help us to remember and to reach out to others by whatever means we can these days. And though we are separated from one another, grant us the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and bind us together in Christ. O oh God, take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of your peace. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now I would invite you to sing along with the hymn, All the Way My Savior Leads Me, and you will see the words on the screen.
thank you for joining us today in this time of worship. I would like to thank all those who have been faithfully remembering and supporting the church during these days, and your help and your support is greatly appreciated. And may I say that if you would like to be in touch with the church for any reason or to make a donation, you may do so through the information provided on the Streetsville United Church website. Thank you once again for worshiping with us today. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and remain with us forevermore. Amen.